Three, you got a problem. Do we need to abort, Shepard? No, no, no. Electrical's good. Everything, everything's good inside here. Uh, but I, I gotta go pee. Roger, Shepard. You're gonna have to hold it for the flight. What do you, what do you mean hold it? I'm going to space. I'm not. I can't hold it. I've been up here for three hours. I had a lot of root beer before. I don't know what you want me to do. Uh, Roger the root beer, Shepard. Uh, we're gonna have to consult some engineers on this. Hang on. Just hold out. You know, fine. I'm just gonna go. No, no, you, you can't. This is a spacesuit meant to take me to space. They can hold some pee. Uh... Houston, everything is a okay up here. Freedom 7 is very nice. Mm. So on May 5th, 1961, Alan Shepard launched from Cape Canaveral and into history. As the first American in space, he energized the space race with the Soviet Union and energized the United States as a whole. He showed what was possible. What I want to talk about today is five amazing things that we d might not know about this American hero. So the first thing we need to know is he was not the first man in space, but he was so close. Just 23 days separated him from Yuri Gagarin of the USSR at the time. Now, while Gagarin was only a, a passenger in his capsule that he didn't actually land in, check out my video about that, Shepard actually flew and could make corrections while in space. Now Shepard's flight only lasted 15 minutes in space, but it was still pretty amazing. And word is by his biographer later in life that him and John Glenn actually were competing for the role of the first man, or sorry, the first American in space. And apparently, this isn't me, this is the biographer speaking, apparently John Glenn wasn't too happy that Shepard got to go first. Unlike uh, Yuri Gagarin in Russia, the whole world was actually watching Shepard launch. The whole event was such a success that it allowed uh, President John F. Kennedy at the time, only 10 days later, to make a historic speech to the U.S. Congress about putting a man on the moon within the decade. So something that we kind of covered at the beginning is he went to space in a pea-soaked spacesuit. So since the flight was actually only planned to be 15 minutes, NASA didn't plan for number one or number two <laughs> situations, which ended up being a big mistake. So delays in launch actually ended up being three hours that he was stuck in the space capsule before launch. Now, when he actually requested to to get out and go pee, it was denied at the time because he was already strapped in. He had already had sensors all over his body. It's such an ordeal to get him in the capsule in the first place. They weren't going to take him out just to go pee. So what would any reasonable person do at the time? He threatened to pee in the spacesuit. It's kind of funny because Ben Evans, a writer in America Space, actually wrote about this later on and said that the managers at the time were wondering how the P would actually affect all the sensors and everything, all the circuitry that was attached to him to keep track of his, his temperature and, and uh, heart rate and all these kind of things. Uh, eventually, Gordon Cooper, another astronaut, actually confirmed that power had been shut down to the suit and to everything in it. And not too long after, they heard an audible, ah. Uh over the comm system. Now the urine actually just ended up being absorbed by his cotton underwear and ended up just being evaporated in the 100% in the oxygen environment that he was in. <laughs> and of course, after that, NASA got hard at work to implement an actual system that didn't require just peeing all over yourself. Now, another fact about Alan Shepard that doesn't include any bodily functions, but is actually really cool, he was actually the first person to golf in space. After his uh, Freedom 7 flight, he contracted a disease in his inner ears that threw off his equilibrium and affected his hearing. So after some more setbacks and, and surgery to, to help regain, regain some of this equilibrium back, he was actually able to go on another uh, space trip, this time on Apollo 14 to the moon. And at 47 years old, he ended up being the oldest man to go to the moon at the time. So being the oldest, he obviously wanted to do something memorable. So what do all old people love to do? Golf. So he smuggled up a uh, makeshift six iron onto the moon and played around. Uh, yes, and while you're looking that up, you might recognize what I have in my hand is the uh, handle for the contingency sample return. I just still happen to have a NU6 iron on the bottom of it. In my left hand, I have a little white pellet that's from million and millions of Americans uh, dropping down. Unfortunately, the suit is so stiff, I can't do it with two hands, but I'm going to try a little sand trap shot here. Like a slice to me, Al. There we go. Three of the time. 
One more. Now, he's only able to take a, a few hits, but he estimated that his second shot actually went 200 yards thanks to the moon's gravity. So some more history about Alan Shepard and his flight, his original Freedom 7 flight, is that he coined a very specific phrase that he might not have actually came up with. So in the hours waiting for Freedom 7 to lift off, Shepard was actually supposed to say what would later become known as Shepard's Prayer or the Astronaut's Prayer. Now I'm going to censor it, but what it was supposed to be was, Dear Lord, please don't let me F up. However, he was misquoted and what he actually said was, Don't F up, Shepard. Talking to himself. In another piece of misquoting, he was actually quoted as, as becoming the first person to use the phrase, everything is A-OK, -okay, on his return from his space flight. However, years later, when asked about it, he, he returned with, the, with saying, ask Shorty Powers. Colonel Powers was actually the press officer who passed the original quote onto the media at the time. Now, this one's a little bit more fun, but apparently he was the first astronaut millionaire. In the years that he ended up with the, the ear disease. He wasn't sure if he would stay on with NASA or move on to something else, and he ended up staying in a desk job. Shepard became the head of the astronaut office at the time. He spent all his free time at the time investing in banks and real estate, apparently ended up becoming a millionaire. He retired from NASA in 1974 and became the chairman of the Marathon Construction Company, and later the president of Coors Beer Company in Houston. Now, after Shepard's long and historic lifetime, NASA and with the side businesses and running companies, he ended up dying in 19. 1998. A very long and fruitful life, I, I must say, but his accomplishments are so huge becoming the first man in space and the amazing things about him being on the moon. It's incredible to know what this man accomplished. Now, I really love learning about all these astronauts like John Glenn and Alan Shepard and Gordon Cooper and these guys that led the charge and were the, the, the forefront of the space race. Now, if you guys enjoy watching some of this, I really, I thank you for watching, truly. Like, it, it means so much that, that there's people watching and enjoying this and maybe learning something. It's really cool. Uh, if you did like it, then consider subscribing if you think I earned it and deserved it. If not, leave some feedback. I always appreciate feedback, good, negative, other, whatever. Let me know. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there's something about the format you don't like. Any feedback is greatly appreciated. Consider supporting me on Patreon. That's really awesome. We got our first patron, so that's really cool. Twitter, Facebook, blah, 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 all the good stuff. If you like this, guys, thank you so much. Thank you so much for supporting this cool little side project of mine. I really appreciate it. Coming soon is going to be some information about Expedition 56. That's pretty cool. Going to the, the space station in the beginning of June, I believe. So if you do like this, guys, thank you. I appreciate it. And we'll see you next time on Space Course.